as in the days of Noah. Did you know that there are many references to both mythological and also real monsters in the Bible? The Bible, depending on the translation, refers to dragons, unicorns, satires, cockatrices, the behemoth, leviathan, and the nephilim. Even God's holy angels are described in such detail as to scare even the bravest of men. So, why am I discussing these subjects? Because, now more than ever, people need to be aware of what is going on in the world, and they need to know who it is that they can and already has helped them, if they were only to believe. So just what are the Nephilim, Afghanistan giants, aliens, UFOs, ghosts, Sasquatch, Mothman, Dogman, and many, many more? What's real and what's folklore? The world is witnessing so many appearances of supernatural entities lately, but why? Why? In my opinion, the why is answered quite simply. Satan wanted to be God, and he hates you, the human. He especially hates you if you are a believer in Jesus, and his ultimate goal is to distract us with lies and magic and pseudo-miracles, all in an effort to either keep us from faith or to get us to lose our faith. If he accomplishes that task, then he will certainly have company when God sends him to the lake of fire. On today's episode, I will be laying the groundwork for the supernatural. In order to do that, I will be sharing some Bible passages with you that seem to undeniably describe for us the lengths to which God wants us to know the truth. So let's start with the book of Luke and the warning Luke, an apostle of Christ, gives us. We'll start reading out of Luke 17, verses 26 to 30. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, meaning the day that Jesus Christ comes back for the final judgment. So what is it that Satan does that's so appealing to some and so revolting to others, and how does he get away with it? Well, the book of Ephesians reveals some truth. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Let's break that down a little bit. First of all, it says we are wrestling, but not against flesh and blood, but in our spirit. Do you ever feel that wrestling of your spirit? That's your human nature fighting in conflict against sin, wanting to sin but yet not wanting to sin because we want to follow God because we love him. And so here it says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So what is it we're wrestling? Rulers, authorities, cosmic powers that present themselves in the darkness against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Let's look at that word cosmic. Merriam-Webster says, cosmic is this of or relating to the cosmos, the extraterrestrial vastness, or the universe in contrast to the Earth alone. Isn't that interesting? The extraterrestrial vastness. Speaking of the skies, but isn't that also the same term that we use for alien life forms? Cosmic or extraterrestrial. And back to Ephesians 6.12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now let me take you back to the beginning. What beginning? The beginning before time existed. The book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, tells us this. God created everything in six days and then rested on the seventh. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Day one, he created light. 
Day two, he created sky. Day three, he created land, sea, and vegetation. Day four, he created the sun, moon, stars, and planets. Day five, the sea and air creatures. Day six was most important. God created land creatures, but then he also created man, us human beings. Genesis, verse six, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and over the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God, who is three persons, was speaking amongst himself, saying, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him rule over everything that we've created. So, excuse me, verse 27, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then we jump to Genesis chapter 6, talking about what happened on the earth after God had created everybody and started letting them populate the earth. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Doesn't that sound familiar? Look around today, look at what you see on the news, war, rumors of wars, everybody having a problem not recognizing their gender, uh, sex trafficking, the, Political race is just full of evil and discontent, and it's just, it's the same way now as it was before God flooded the earth. The Lord says he regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. So now we're going to do a little more laying of the groundwork. We're going to go into the book of Job, and we're going to start talking about how demons and Nephilim are correlated. Job chapter 1, verse 6 says, One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Here's where we get our key about where Satan is. He's not in hell. He's not in hell and he's not porting from hell to earth. Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. And what's so significant about this? Well, besides the fact that Satan was on the earth roaming about, seeking whom he could devour, which is people, he wants your soul, it says... One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. And in the original Hebrew, my understanding is instead of the word angels, they changed that with the sons of God. One day the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. Well, the significance of that is the sons of God is used in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And in the Old Testament, it appears as though the sons of God speaks about possibly God's wise counsel that fell away from faith and disobeyed the Lord, came down to the earth, along with the devil, who was going back and forth on it. And these were the angels that possibly had sex with the human women. The reason I bring that up is because the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 10 says, Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Well, this tells me that the holy angels are always before God, standing before his throne and circling his throne, 
just as many other books of the Bible agree. And so that an angel that comes with Satan to present itself to God must not have been always surrounding God's throne. Therefore, he was not a holy angel. Therefore, it was a demonic fallen angel. So in the Old Testament, the sons of God were demons, while in the New Testament it describes Christians and holy angels as the sons of God. Well, this begs the question then, what are demons? Demons are fallen angels as professed in scripture. All throughout scripture, Jesus speaks about them. He's cast them out of people. They are the fallen angels. But specifically, which demons were responsible for the Nephilim? Well, again, Jude 1, 6 refers to this. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Well, that would seem to indicate to me that these particular sets of angels were the sons of God that came down and impregnated the women and created the Nephilim. And God was so opposed to this that he already, after the fact of them impregnating the women, took them and punished them by chaining them up in everlasting darkness. So the other angels that are wandering around here that are demonic apparently did not have sex with the women. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, 7 to 9, also tells us more about the devil and why we know that he's here on the earth. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. So it's right there. Even though this is a, a, a book that most people, you know, they look at the book of Revelation and they say, oh, this is all metaphorical. Well, it's not. There are parts of it that are, are simply fact where all they've done is change it into more of a story. It's more of a storyline to hear about a great dragon than it is just the devil. Revelation 12, 9, the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with them. Verse 17, then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. So it's no wonder Christians are under oppression, you know, and uh, it's no wonder that unbelievers become possessed. 2 Corinthians 11:14, and no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Well, there's a great verse to talk about with shape-shifting. These, these demons, God never stripped any of them of their abilities. They have abilities beyond our understanding, but what Scripture tells us is that if Satan, who is the epitome of evil, can appear as an angel of light, well, he's not, also a, he's not only a deceiver, he's also a shape-shifter. And if he's a shapeshifter, the demons are shapeshifters. And then the, the angels at Sodom and Gomorrah, the good holy angels, listen to what happened there. Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed, Genesis 19. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground, because he understood there was something different about them. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. So they appeared to Lot as humans because he saw their dirty feet and was telling them they could wash them. The angels answered, no, we will spend the night in the square. But Lot insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate it. So they were able to consume food, digest it. But yet they were a spiritual being in heaven. Before they had gone to battle, the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called a lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? They look like men to them too. Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. But Lot said, don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. But the men inside, meaning the angels, 
reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, the humans, outside with blindness so they could not find the door. So here we got spiritual beings that changed into physical beings looking like men that still were able to maintain some type of power the Lord had given them and make these people blind. And there's, there's other instances in this same story. They come back and they say, with the coming of the dawn, the angels urged Lot, hurry, leave. But then when Lot hesitated, they referred back to them as men. The men grasped Lot's hand in the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city. So, these things can shapeshift. So if the holy angels shapeshift, Satan and his demons can shapeshift because again, God did not take away any of that authority that they have there with their physical beings and their ability to shapeshift. So to recap, Satan and his fallen angels are an army. They're able to shapeshift or change into solid human form. It's easy to see then that fallen angel is the son of God, came to earth and disobeyed God. These angels turned themselves into humans just like the angels that Sodom and Gomorrah did. And then they impregnated women and raped men, animals and other creatures, producing terrible offspring that denied God's creation and altered the original DNA structures. This unnatural union brought about the Nephilim, human slash demon hybrids which were large in stature and vicious in nature. The fallen angels or sons of God that created the Nephilim were bound with chains and cast into eternal darkness, never to walk the earth again, refer again to Jude 1.6. The fallen angels that rebelled against God and were cast to earth but did not have sex with humans or any of the other creatures are known as demons and they walk the earth yet this day. According to the book of Enoch, the Nephilim were a terrible race prone to destruction, murder, and rape. They were even known to have sex with male humans and with animals, which leads me to speculate about such creatures as the Dogman and Bigfoot or Sasquatch. In the book of Samuel, one of the giants was reported to have six fingers and six toes. Here we are, 2 Samuel 21:20. And there was yet a battle in Gath, or Goth, where there was a man of great stature who had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. Now this correlates with the findings of the soldiers that were fighting a battle over in Afghanistan on the Kandahar Mountains. Apparently soldiers were battling a giant that had come out of a cave in Afghanistan and killed it. The giant was said to have red hair, had stood about ten foot tall or more, was muscular, had six toes and six fingers. These reports have come out from various other governmental reports and they all seem to agree that this being had six digits on his toes and hands. So this must be a genetic outcome of the unnatural sexual acts between the demons and the humans. And it appears to be a factor of many giants reported to either have been witnessed or captured. So that leads me to the next question. What or who are the Dogman and Bigfoot? Are these creatures the byproduct of yet another unholy union between these demonic beings and man and beast? And how does any of this explain theories concerning alien life forms on other planets? Mothman, Slenderman, and so many, many more myths, legends, folklores, and realities. All I can tell you is this. Remember, Jesus Christ is true God, and he died for everyone who will believe in him. Tune in next week when we talk about Bigfoot or Sasquatch or Yeti or many other names that he has. Is he related to the Nephilim or is he a separate creature? Is he a paranormal entity? We'll talk next about that next week. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.